Shout out to our sponsor, Sherry's Berries. Mother's Day isn't far off, guys. Think she'd love some freshly dipped strawberries? Yeah, she would. Yes, she absolutely would. Send her some for $19.99. Visit berries.com, click the microphone in the top right corner, and use offer code THE NO with a space. Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Meg Turney. Kick some asteroid. The Ratchet and Clank movie hit theaters nationwide this weekend, bringing some of our favorite PlayStation exclusive characters to the silver screen. A joint collaboration between Insomniac and Sony Interactive Entertainment, and based very heavily on the new game, the film was poised to change the stigma of bad video game movies. Was. Uh, according to early reviews and box office performance, it seems like Ratchet and Clank's synergism wet dreams are just about as dead as all the rest of those lumboxes. <laughs> Only a few seconds in, and we're already joking about intergalactic genocide, Yay! everyone. Hey, they genocided the Kragmites first. Mm -mm. Uh, we're probably spoiling the movie in some way, but this dose has been part of the games for a while now, so I assume that you already know it all. Play your game. Here's another spoiler alert for you. The movie's debut, not exactly impressive in any way, shape, or form. Also not a spoiler. Uh, in its opening weekend, Ratchet and Clank pulled in a tremendous, mind-blowing haul of 4.8 million dollars. For the weekend, it placed seventh behind the Jungle Book, The Huntsman, Winner's War. It placed behind The Huntsman, Winner's War. I mean, Keanu come on. Who was also on there? <sighs> Mother's Day, which is gonna be like next weekend, I bet that movie's gonna do well. Barbershop, The Next Cut, and Zootopia. And Zootopia, by the way, has been in theaters for nine weeks. And also features computer animated animals. Yeah. Uh, although to be fair to Ratchet and Clank here, Zootopia is on its way to becoming literally the second or third highest grossing original movie of all time by the time it's done with its theatrical run. Basically, no one was gonna beat Zootopia. It doesn't matter what animals you had. That's true. Not even a mid-level exclusive video game series on it. Unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, this bad box office comes after record-breaking sales for the game in its opening month, so that's good. Uh, the game is already the fastest selling entry in the franchise. Yeah, so there's no silver lining there, and the game Yay. itself is at least being reviewed well too. Uh, at the moment, its Metacritic score sits at 86, which is not bad at all. No, which makes it odd that the box office performance has turned out to be so low. Uh, it would stand to reason that with a new and arguably very good game out, you'd think the buzz would be relatively high for series fans. However, the game itself might have hurt the film's potential audience. I mean, it's been pretty common knowledge for a couple of weeks now that the movie is basically a 90 minute cutscene summarizing the entire game. By Hideo Kojima. Uh, so if fans of the game have no reason to see it, who's supposed to go? Exactly. Who, we ask you. And the answer is no one. 4.8 million dollars worth of people. The movie was particularly marketed to families, but given the list we just read, which already includes The Jungle Book, Zootopia, I mean, they gave Ratchet and Clank some really stiff competition. And then, of course, there's Civil Freaking War coming out next weekend. Well, it's already out internationally, but coming out domestically next weekend to mop up any of Ratchet and Clank's leftovers. That movie's already passed the $200 million mark worldwide. And it's not even here yet. Can't wait, though. Also, that hardly seems fair. Team Cap. Besides killing its audience and shooting itself in the foot by releasing amidst crazy competition, Ratchet and Clank the movie might not be all that good. Despite a star-studded cast and the fact that they worked heavily with Insomniac to produce it, none of that really seemed to add up for critics. Uh, the movie's rating is sitting at an abysmal 19% on Rotten Tomatoes at the time of writing, with a number of choice quotes associated with it, like, those who are curious about what Ratchet and Clank has to offer are better off picking up a controller and experiencing the adventure for themselves. It's certainly going to yield a better time than this forgettable misfire. Cinema Blend also offers its take. Ratchet and Clank lives up to its name, as those are the sounds your mind will make when trying to wrap your head around how this movie got made in the first place. Oh man, going for the onomatopoeia jokes. Very highbrow. Uh, and then, of course, there's the San Francisco Chronicle, whose review states, My eight-year-old loved it, but he would eat a dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets for every meal if I let him so let's not consider his opinion. Well, I mean, what? come on, he was kind of the audience. The eight-year-olds of the chicken nuggets, I'd eat you dinosaur chicken nuggets. You cannot be putting nuggets. chicken nuggets on blast, bro. Nope. Not All right, cool. buddy, can we leave just the social commentary out of the movie reviews and nuggets stop alone. taking shots at dinosaur chicken nuggets? <laughs> yeah, lots of stuff went wrong with this movie, uh, critically and commercially, which is really a shame because we're all in favor of seeing more awesome video game prophecy Make it to the screen. Yeah, and when you consider that the movie was produced in part by Insomniac, plus one of the series' senior writers, you would have hoped they'd know how to carry 
the franchise from one format to another with ease. Yeah, it seemed like Sony could have a Marvel moment on its hands. <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, it does definitely make sense for them to take their exclusive PlayStation properties and try and build film franchises out of them. Yeah, in the past, so many video game movies have been objectively awful in part because of studio mishandling and not understanding the core properties of the series. So we're all very well aware of a number of failures like the Super Mario Brothers movie, Prince of Persia, and sadly, uh, the list goes on longer than that. Yeah, but it's not too often that the reverse happens, where a video game studio is really heavily involved and things still really just, well, they suck. That's also been the case, by the way, with Wing Commander, which was directed by the series creator and current star citizen head honcho, Chris Roberts. Yeah, the natural tendency for a disconnect to exist between video game storytellers and filmmakers has led to some development problems on more than one occasion. For instance, both The Last of Us and Uncharted movies have entered their own circles of development hell, uh, according to Naughty Dog. The Uncharted movie came under a bit of fire early on when word spread that David O. Russell wanted to turn the series into a family drama starring Mark Wahlberg, Joe Pesci, and Robert De Niro. What? How could that go poorly? Yeah. I want to see it, kind of, though. <laughs> I mean, just to see the train wreck, sure. Right. <laughs> uh, after tons of backlash and creative differences, O. Russell eventually left the project, citing creative differences, saying that he was just trying to do what interested him as a filmmaker. Which, I get, but you, filmmaker, uh, audience, established property. Come on. Yeah. Well, we're certainly not going to defend the really bizarre direction for that Uncharted movie, although we both kind of want to see the train wreck. There's definitely an argument to be had about the passive versus active natures of movies versus games, which many have felt keeps them from transitioning well to the big scene. Yeah, in short, video game developers might not always know what makes the best movie. Though the writing in games, like Uncharted, are often celebrated and mainly exist as a vehicle for the gameplay, which is obviously the most important thing in a video game, but Uncharted is basically a movie that you play. That's true. I'm sorry. Developers often claim the story comes first, but generally with big productions and AAA games, concept art, story, gameplay mechanics, and level design documents are all being produced in tandem. It's not one and then the other. They all kind of soup up. Yeah, there simply isn't time for huge games operating on that kind of scale to wait around for each team to do their part and then hand it off to the next department. So while they pay a lot of lip service to the story, it's often just another method of delivery for a moving game from you know one level and then going to the next. Yeah, it's almost like it services the gameplay, right. usually, at least these days. Uh, while we play the game, we we don't notice that that's happening. We're so involved because we're making the decisions in it that we don't need a whole lot of actual motivation to enjoy the transition between a couple of levels, but that's not the case with movies. Yeah, a quick glance at the storytelling structure of movies versus video games reveals some enormous differences. What? <laughs> Often in a video game, you're required to play upwards of one to two hours before you're even given the first inklings of a main character's motivation. Well, that's the tutorial. How will I know to press A to jump? Why does he <laughs> want to jump off the building into the straw? The yeah. straw, I can't talk. <laughs> And that all, of course, shifts wildly for open world games where a player basically chooses a story at their own pace and that's just the start of the problems they have to solve. Yeah, we'd like to think that attaching developers to each of these projects is what ultimately is going to help, but at the end of the day, I mean, you really need knowledgeable filmmakers who know how to make it work. And aren't just gonna insert Joe Pesci because. Uh, you can have Mark Wahlberg though, we'll give you. <laughs> uh, well, it seems like everyone should be able to marvel this by now. It does show just how unique it is, and what Marvel's accomplished. I mean, they managed to get a guy in Kevin Feige who simply knows how to make movies and also has this breadth of experience with the source material, unlike anybody else. Yeah, but again, comics are inherently the same type of passive participation as watching a movie. So, you know, it's, it's apples and oranges. In a game, you take a very active role. With other video game movies on the way this year, like Warcraft and Assassin's Creed, we'll have plenty more opportunities to judge if someone can get this formula right. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Are video game movies just doomed across the board, or eh, is Ratchet and Clank just shit? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm really hoping that Ratchet and Clank was just like the Fantastic Four, we can still get our comic book movies, golden era guys. Yeah. But to find out if we do, like this video and subscribe to The Know. Thanks to Sherry's Berries for sponsoring this update. Mother's Day is coming up faster than you guys think, so don't put off getting her something. Yeah, I think she'd like some freshly dipped strawberries. We do, because yes. we kind of fight over these whenever we get some in the office. In fact, someone stole one of our strawberries. That's why there's only it's two rude. back there. You can send her a batch for just $19.99. Just go to berries.com, click the microphone in the top right corner, and enter the code the no with a space. And look at these. Look, look at how big these are. Nah. Look at it. Look at it. Do we have a banana for scale? Look at these. <laughs> They're huge. Hold on. Face for scale. They're enormous.